Three quarters of the people of this country think that Ireland is taking in too many refugees. That was the stark finding in a poll in the Business Post yesterday. Yeah, I was more worried by the other finding in the poll. That, is it 56% of people, Kira, don't want asylum seekers in their area? To me, that was more worrying. Take them, but that. don't take them here. Yeah, not in my backyard. So, does the government need to change tack when it comes to its asylum seeker policy and indeed to its communications with, I suppose, the citizens of the country? I'm joined now by Cahill Crow, who's a Fianna Fáil TD for Clare and Jennifer Whitmore, Social Democrat TD for Wicklow. Cahill, I'll come to you first of all. Obviously, we've seen protests in Clare and road blockades and, and, and quite a bit of resistance from locals to, to uh, a new set of arrivals of, of asylum seekers. What's your view on, on, on where we're at? There was, there was quite stark findings in this poll yesterday. Yeah, I, I certainly had a look at the poll and I suppose it does speak to where the country's at at this time. We're, we're still in a time of crisis um, and we will be for the foreseeable future, certainly for the next number of months. There's no sign of the war in Ukraine ending. And all of those problems overseas, be they war, famine or persecution, they're going to continue as well. So we're going to have to continue dealing with refugee situations. I suppose how we deal with it really should be up for discussion. Um, And I would have seen best practice in County Clare maybe 12, 14 months ago as our first uh, Ukrainian arrivals came to the the county, I should say. Very welcome, very well coordinated. Um, There was multi-agency planning and that has changed quite a lot in recent weeks where uh, and I can tell you verbatim as elected representative, you'd find out now kind of overnight, you're then expected to have answers at community meetings. Um, and the whole thing just leaves a kind of a sour taste. We, we would have communities out there 12, 14 months ago themselves out fundraising and, you know, gathering clothes and food for, for yeah. people to welcome them. And now they're having meetings where they're asking what's going on. So I think that just speaks to uh, people wanting to play their part. Uh, and Cahill, is that, is that a function broad. of numbers arriving or is that a function of poor communication on the part of your own government? I, For myself, look, it's it's maybe different if you're the local resident on because they would say, look, I'm living beside a facility. It's their, their concern set might be different to mine. I think what's essential here is that a certain amount of information is in the ether. People can then decide if it's far them, if it's not. Uh, but what we've had recently is, uh, you know, an announcement to be made maybe the Thursday and on Friday the whole facility opens up. Um, I, I think there's a model that could really well be followed here. One of the problems, and it hasn't been debated once on national media, is that we have two competing systems. We have IPAS, who are co- coordinating at this time uh, international protection applicants, and then we've a uh, whole response to Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian refugee crisis. In many instances, you the two bodies compete against each other for accommodation. The Ukrainian situation, I would say to this day, is still really well coordinated. The government has appointed a director of service in each county council. You've just been talking about county councils. Really well coordinated. There's a stakeholder forum. So there's a really good level of planning with schools, local health services. So you're saying the the, the, the organisation of Ukrainians arriving here remains good, but other uh, people seeking international protection, not so good. Let me bring in Jennifer Whitmore. Jennifer, you've seen the results of this poll too. Um, Your reaction, I suppose, to the high level of people who feel that there's too many people arriving. Yeah, well, it was interesting actually because when I when I first uh, saw the results of the poll and saw the headline yesterday, I, I was quite concerned and I and I was, you know, thinking about the framing of it and actually what the question, you know, meant. It was it was framed in a very particular way. So, um, you know, the, the the question itself was that you know, do you think that the number of refugees Ireland is taking in is is too many? Now, um, it didn't delve into or the headline didn't appear to delve into the reasons why, but actually, there was another question asked in that poll and it was asked. Um, it asked people whether they were happy about the state's failure to provide accommodation for all asylum seekers who arrived here and 50% of people were not satisfied uh, that the state was actually providing enough accommodation and therefore you know the services that are needed. So I think initially when I saw that the, the first poll heading I thought it was an anti immigration sentiment but actually if you delve down into further questions it wasn't what what people are concerned about is the state's Jennifer, failure over, oh, to in that, manage in, in people that, properly hang on, but Jennifer in. in that poll over half of people said that they did not want refugees or asylum seekers in their area so I'm not quite sure that yeah, your, your read of that is the same as mine. Well, no, what they're saying is they can understand some of the anger. I mean, at the moment... No, Kira, they said they didn't want them in their area. That, 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 
50% in this poll, 50% of people said they were unhappy that the state was not providing accommodation okay. to asylum seekers. And that, you that haven't, is, that you haven't addressed, the you haven't addressed the fact that over 50% said that they didn't want them in their area. What, what's your reaction to because, that? Because, well, because the government is not handle, handling this correctly. And indeed, we have a uh, Fianna Fáil, uh, a government TD here, who, who essentially is saying the same thing, that there is a, a failure in how the government is managing. Now, no one can say that this is not challenging. We all know how challenging this is. But there are a number of things that the government uh, committed to doing, said that they would do, and they haven't done. Um, and I think it's really important that we get some level of urgency from government in this because we really haven't seen it. We have buildings all over this country that that are state owned, that the government hasn't even started, you know, it, it, turning into accommodation places. We have the Bagot Street Hospital, which the entire community there wanted to offer uh, to, to host refugees, and um, and there was business people who were involved in that, you know, wanted to get involved in that project. They were going to fund it, and the state said, well, actually, it's going to take us nine months to do a feasibility study on turning that into accommodation. Now, I don't understand how any feasibility study could take nine months to do. So I think you can see that that actually whilst, you know, uh, the the government is not providing the systems in place um, to to deal with people coming in. And that is what's causing the difficulties in communities. Let me bring back Cahill. Cahill, according to Jennifer, you're not getting it right. You're you're, you're taking too long. You're too slow. You're not providing the services. And the main reason uh, her interpretation of this is, is that people are unhappy is because of government handling of the situation. I don't think this is a really a soapbox for Social Democrats to give one up on the government. Look, there's a crisis going on here. Uh, we in our county here in Clare have taken more than any other county pro rata. It's about 6% of our population. As I head out in the school run very shortly, I'll pass two or three refugee centres on the way. We're proud of the role we've played. But the point I would make is that there are two systems competing. That manifests itself on the ground, sometimes in a chaotic fashion. And I think what needs to happen here is 12 months into the Ukrainian crisis, there should be one centralised uh, linear system that uh, is, is, is coordinated accommodation for everyone entering the country at this time. Um, it's working in many places here, but one place that isn't been well managed, I would say at this time, is the tented accommodation in my own village. I've repeatedly highlighted, in fact, I've been on your show recently. That only gets spoken about when the temperatures get pretty low. But there are many examples then where it's working quite well. And I think we quickly need to move also to the example uh, that Britain have taken on board in the last month, that being floating accommodation. I think that's working quite successfully there and I hope it'll happen in Ireland in the near future as well. All right, look, we'll, 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 unfortunately we'll have to leave it there, but thank you both very much for speaking to us this morning. We'd love to know what people out there listening think as well this morning, but that is Cahill Crow, Fianna Fáil TD for Clare and Jennifer Whitmore, Social Democratic uh, TD for Wicklow. Let us know. I'm sure you've seen the poll. Three quarters of people think we're taking too many people. 55% of people say they don't want um, uh, refugees or asylum seekers in their own area. What do you think? What needs to change? What needs to happen? 